know what that means? No one knows what it means, but it's provocative. Uh, no, it's not. It's it gets gross. the people it's going. Well, Hector, here's the game plan. You're gonna bring us two absolute martinis. You know how I like them, straight up. And then precisely seven and one half minutes after that, you're gonna bring us two more. Then two more after that every five minutes until one of us passes the fuck out. You got a bad attitude and you don't listen. Oh yes. There will be blood. It is not the violence that sets men apart. All right, it is the distance that he is prepared to go. Ever notice how you come across somebody once in a while that you shouldn't have fucked with? That's me. How the fuck else would you do this job? Cocaine and hookers, my friend. Welcome to the Max Ordnance Podcast. What is up, Max Ordnance Nation? It is Friday evening, April 21st, right? Jeff, been a hell of a week. Been a hell of a week. I'm just just crushing a burrito. I've been here doing my thing, having to manage this show without you. It hasn't been the same, right? Meanwhile, meanwhile, you, Mm -hmm. my friend, you've been out having all the fun. And what I mean by that is I found a video of you and your friends out there on Pebble Beach doing this, and it's unacceptable. It's unacceptable. It's the only way to do it. That is not how we golf, my friend. Um, That is how we golf. And I feel like you're being kind of judgy. Maybe I'm just jealous I, I wasn't there. I can do that oh. kind of golf. It's the swing and the stick around and hitting little balls that I struggle oh. at. Well, that's only a small portion of it. Is it though? So, anyways, uh, whoa, bro, yeah, this you need trip to call. Was, uh, uh, I know I need to call. This trip was actually pretty good. It was nice to get away for a couple of days. It turned into kind of a week long hiatus for me, but um, yeah, it was a uh, it's a good trip. It was man. to Carmel, played a couple courses. I saw some photos. Well. I can't complain. Yeah, if you guys want to check yeah. them out, you can check out Jeff's social media. He's on Instagram at Savage422. So I was going to ask you, right? Because, you know, if the listeners don't know, I am around the world right now. I'm on the other side of the planet. And it is 422 for me. So I'm kind of wondering if that correlates with your name, because I really don't know what that means. Savage (sighs) four with two twos. I mean, is it like, well, 422? Like your party never April ends? 20, April 22nd, maybe? Because it's April 22nd where you're at. I know. So what is I that? Will be, I will be turning 47 tomorrow. 47 Today, ten- years old. Yep. My God, man. That's you are me. a dinosaur. I know, and I feel it. But I'm getting younger every day. As long as I, I stay this, in the gym and I stay in shape. I thought this was a youth show, you know, like for people under 40. Oh, I had no sorry. idea that I brought an oh, old timer yeah. onto this show. Yeah, great. well, at least I have a birthday every year. Wow. Oh. That's a mean thing to say. Oh, that is, wow. That is tough. wow. All right. All right. Well, we're going to just get moving along here. There is something <laughs> that I wanted to show you. Okay. And um, what was it? Last week we had talked about, we showed a picture of, you know, 1760 with a mile you know, a mile congratulations rifle on there. Like here you hit the mile target and you get this sticker and it was from vortex optics and they had literally taken our sticker and just put their name on it. They didn't change the font. They didn't even change the fucking rifle. I don't even know if they realized that that photo was taken with a Schmidt and Bender on top. Like Mm, they don't care. They don't care. Right. They're just, they're just taking our, our idea and they're, pushing it as their own so i have this for you okay this is uh off of instagram ballistic x app i don't know if you use them um 
I use them every once in a while. It's a really cool app where you can take a photo of your group and you can tell it how big a reference point is and it'll tell you how big that group was. Are you shooting sub MOA, you shooting half MOA, right? And you can track all of these things. You can track powder load, you can track you know, how many rounds it was, what, what's your average group. You can remove shots and say, oh, that was a flyer. Like, doesn't that doesn't count, right? And it's yeah. a good app, and it's been around it's for a years. It's a great app, and I've used it for years. So I can't really educate it, like, put an educated number to this, but I'm trying to think back of, like, when I was roaming around the country, working heavily with Falcor Defense, 2017 time frame, I had met up with the developer of Ballistic X and we had shot a match together. Cool guy. He was building a camper trailer and, you know, whatever. At the end of the day, this app has been around for what, going on six years now, at least. At and least, you look yeah. at the photo, look at the photo here. And now you've got Hornady with their four DAW fucking shitty ballistic calculator. And it's not shitty. I mean, I'm just talking shit because I'm irritated, right? Uh, I don't personally use their Ford off calculator. I don't see any benefits to using four degrees of freedom when it's not changing anything, right? I see no yeah. difference in dopes or nothing like that. And it's not as user-friendly as Ballistic Arc or Geoballistics. So mm -hmm. the irritating part, and you can see if you read the screen here, Ballistic X posted this, said, Big fan of your products, but this is distasteful. The format, sequence, layout, display, basically identical to my fucking app, you know, without saying the fucking app part in there. Uh, so I like that he called them out. He put their hashtag or, you know, their their little at symbol in there and all that shit. But is this a, you know, on one side of the spectrum here, Jeff, I feel like half the industry kind of looks at each other as like a gentleman type deal. Does that make, is that make, am yes. I making sense there? No, no, you're, you're, you're completely correct. It's, it's kind of, it's kind of a bitch move for Hornady to do something like that. You know, I mean, you know, we, you know, short of them holding some type of patent or trademark on like the actual, what it does. Like, I don't know, right. I don't know their business, but um, you know, it would have been cool for Hornady to be like, Hey, uh, we want to, we want to integrate Ballistic X into our app. So um, we're going to do this Ford off app that's powered by Ballistic X when it comes to this portion. Like that would have been easy to do. Millions but instead, and millions they just, of dollars under the Hornady they just umbrella. ripped off their, yeah. And you're yeah, going to rip off a small business. Said, Fuck you know, this it, little it guy. Reminds me, it reminds me of, um, it reminds me of fucking, who is it? Night Force when they ripped off um, the, uh, oh God, what is that? Are you the, talking about the the, uh, the Terrac? Yes, exactly. So you get like thirty MOA elevation out of your scope more. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's like, come on, you got all these fucking big pockets. You're just gonna rip off a little guy who's coming up with something pretty cool. And I, you know, I don't know. It's just, that's kind of a bitch move. So, and that's kind of where I was getting at is like on one side of the aisle, like everybody wants to pretend that they're being nice to each other and like, uh, you know to your face everything's great right and then behind your back mm -hmm. it's like i'm gonna rip this off i'm gonna rip that off i'm gonna take your drill i'm gonna take your app i'm gonna you know all of this shit so in reality it's no different than any other business right people are out here to For fucking sure. win and they're gonna do whatever it takes to fucking win right i mean that's the and if you're yeah. not look and if it, it, this is a business and an industry first and foremost right we can call it what we want but um if the onus is going to be on you to find some way to protect your intellectual property. Yeah. If, if you can't do that first, then that guy that stole your shit is a bitch, but you didn't do your job in protecting your own stuff. Yeah. You didn't like, do it just your job to protect is. stuff. And I feel like this yeah. somewhat rolls into like sponsors, sponsored shooters, uh, you know, Companies will reach out to people and say, hey, would you promote this for me? And, and I see it as two different sides mm -hmm. of the aisle. You got one side where maybe you like that company, maybe you like that person. And you're like, oh, I want to help. I want to be part of that, right? And I don't care about the money aspect of it. And that's fine, right? 
you do it once mm-hmm. or twice or something like that. But think about yourself as an individual for um, for just a minute, right? If you've ever looked into what it takes to run a full scale ad into like a, a whole page, let's say Recall Magazine, Sports Illustrated, whatever it is, who cares? Those companies, those magazine companies are charging you six to seven thousand dollars for a full page, right? Four thousand mm-hmm. for a half page. And then you got to think how many people are going to see that. Well, in today's era, how many people still get print magazines? Like, when's the last time you read a fucking recoil magazine? Their social media presence is so much larger now than it used to be because Mm -hmm. nobody reads the magazines anymore. Right. So you think about as an individual, let's say maybe you don't have a lot of followers. Maybe you have, you know, 5,000 followers, not a big number. And you get something from this company and you post it up. You post up multiple photos. Maybe over the entire course of a month, you post up 15 photos or videos of you using this product. You take it to competitions. You take it to your hunts. You take it out to the range and show your buddies. You show random people, right? Your influence may not be as great as that magazine, but the people that you're showing or the people that are watching are genuinely interested in what it is that you have, right? So you're actually impacting sales right there. You're getting the word out about this product. So Mm -hmm. if you look at monetarily, somebody with 5,000 followers could probably charge in the ballpark of like 100 to $125 per post, right? Per post. It's not even a lot. Yep. Um, but it starts to add up. So you do you do 15 posts in a month and you've got fifteen hundred dollars worth of, you know, advertising you did for this company for free. And at a certain point, like companies need to realize that that influence is real and they just keep sending out products, sending out product like, hey, will you do this for me? Will you do this for me? And, you know, before you know it, you're being taken advantage of, which is kind of the same thing. You have these large companies that have the money for this type of advertising and they're just looking at who they can take advantage of to get ahead. You know what I'm saying? Like, absolutely. And so this is, you know, it's funny cause I spent, I spent some time in, in the, in the magazine industry when I was in the automotive world, I did a lot of, I spent a lot of money on advertising. I probably spent, you know, a million bucks a year just on print advertising because back then that's all it was. There was yeah. a little bit of, of, of online stuff, but you know, that was sort of the transition back in, you know, mid, you know, oh five, oh six, where it was kind of not as, you know, the online thing was still a little, eh, do we advertise online or not? No one's going to look at a website. Um, but I spent a lot of money online and now you look or on, on print ads, but you look at where the dollars for advertising are spent now. And, it, and what I will say is we've been saying since 2000 that no one's reading magazines everymore. Everybody's looking at, at, um, ads online, right? But people are still printing magazines, and and the distribution numbers is any uh, you know, the distribution numbers of a magazine are are audited, right? Anytime someone sells an advertise uh, advertising, that that salesperson is going to tell you how many of those magazines are printed and how many are distributed, right? Yeah. So they're still putting them out there, and people still have some eyeballs. But let's say there's, let's say there's a, you know, there's ten thousand you know print mags that go out and. Um, that gets in 10,000 people's hands, but let's cut that number down. It's, let's say it's 8,000. How many of those 8,000 people are actually looking at that one particular ad, right? Yeah. So um, social media advertising, you know, the the back door into social media advertising, which is just giving free, people free shit, has been this new sneaky way of just getting away without paying for advertising. And I'll tell you who's fucking notorious for it. Why is it all of a sudden that SIG firearms are the best and everybody has to have them? You look at everybody who who has some sort of reach and everybody is fucking dick riding this new SIG micro whatever, the SIG optics, the SIG rifles. Bro, like how is it suddenly the new pipe hitters fucking handgun of choice? Because <laughs> they give they give free shit to everybody. Yeah. Like to everybody. And that's and to them, like, okay, cool. They gave away a five hundred dollar pistol, four hundred, maybe three hundred dollars their cost. They just got a million views. What's it cost to get a million views in a print mag? And it only a has a lot to of money. Once, a lot more than right? Like 
Yep. But that when person's going to use that pistol or that that weapon over and over and over again to continue because they're like, wow, I got a free item. Yeah. Sweet. I'm somebody. I'm going to continue to 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 talk about how great it is. I mean, it's it's insane. So the only reason I brought this up is I want people to understand that this is a fucking business, right? And that you have value. Anytime that you get something for free, you have a value in this this plan, even if they don't give a fuck about you, which they probably don't. Right. In the in the grand scheme of things, if you're a small cat in this big ass fucking world, they don't care. They'll send you this two hundred fifty dollar cost pistol and you could post about it. And then you say, you know what? You're not you guys aren't doing enough for me. I'm walking the fuck away and they don't care. They could send a pistol to somebody else and continue this deal. Right. So one is that pistol. Like, do you value it? And if you do, then think about what you need to put into that to equal the value, right? It's a business. And if you're going to be Mm -hmm. in this industry on that side of things, then you need to think of it as a business. You know, if I were to get a product and I say, okay, you know, I have, I I don't know what, what are we at? 40 something thousand followers on Max Ordnance and my personal page. So if I take both of the pages that I have access to and I say, you know what, I'm going to post this item and this item that was given to me is a thousand dollars. You know, I feel like on the Max Ornate page, we could post that approximately four times and we have given them the equivalent of what we've received. Right. And Mm -hmm. that would be the business side of it. Now on the other side is like, well, I'm a nice guy. This is a smaller company and I want to help them. I want to be friends with them. And so I might do more. Right. But ultimately at the end of the day, most of the companies are just saying, this is a business. Does it make sense to give you this? Cause if it doesn't, we wouldn't send it to you. Right. Absolutely. If you just, if you just make one post, that's it. That's all we need from you. Like piss off PN, you know, like, Unfortunately, there's just a lot of blind eyes here, and it goes back to this Hornady thing where these big companies, I feel like, are just going to continue to overstep because what's going to happen to them? Who cares? Is well, anything going to change your mind? Are you going to stop buying Hornady bullets there, fucking Jeff? No, absolutely no. not. No. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to still use them. And, and it's not about – and here's the kicker, and here's the shitter part, is that it's not about – whether or not you can create a patent, whether you can make a trademark and you can and protect yourself against somebody stealing your shit. Yeah. Because none of that matters. Because nope. what matters is whether you have more money in your pocket to pay your lawyer for when Hornady steals your shit to sue them for them to finally go, oh, okay, sorry, we'll stop doing it. Well, it's not even that, because, Jeff. Like, again, I'm not going to name any names, but I know people that have significant amount of money right and i don't even know what their value is i just know that they have a a good chunk of money right and they Mm -hmm. they're being sued and this is a tactic that can be used where you know they'll file a um you know a continuance or they'll file this or they'll file that right and they continue to file these junctions until the Mm -hmm. smaller person runs out of money and can no longer fight this battle and yep whether you agree with it or not, it doesn't matter. That's the way that the world works, you know. Like, uh, can you imagine you know, trying to fight Hornady? I'm, I'm, I'm right there with you. you know, <laughs> can you it's, imagine it's trying insane. to fight Hornady? Yeah, and that's exactly it. it's 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 whoever has the most money at the end of the day wins. Yeah. So you can you can protect you can protect yourself as much as you want, but if you don't have enough money to to win it in court against yeah. a company like that, so and that's where it sucks. Like, it is a business. And these biz, these big businesses are going to win no matter what. I mean, how many times have people, you know, rallied against Remington or rallied against Ruger or rallied against whoever because they did something shady, nefarious, un Second Amendment supporting? People still buy their shit. Like, yeah, I don't care. People are still buying their shit. Yep. So, if we could just do a little bit to bring some of this shit to light and warn you, like, mm-hmm. they're going to take advantage of you. So get yours while you can. Like that's it. Yeah. So you know, I'm not. I'm not calling anybody out. I need a. I need a couple. Um. I need a three to eighteen. Uh. Mark five, and I need a. <laughs> and I need a five to one twenty five. I mean, I'm not saying. I'm not saying send me some freestyle. I'm just saying that I need those. You know what? For all the companies that I have done stuff with, or been sponsored by, or been partnered with, like, 
I have to say, like, on an honest level, working with Leupold has probably been one of the best companies I've ever had the pleasure of doing anything with, like, in terms of Agreed. communication, ease, you know, hey, you know, the, it, it's, it's a two-way street. Like, they say, hey, you know, like, we're looking – to get this and i'm like okay how can i help you promote this product or you know can you send it to me so i could test it or like sometimes they don't even ask me to promote anything they're just like we need to know what you think and i'm like all right cool like mm -hmm. it's just been a really awesome time being um part of that team uh that loophole has put together and they have a lot of people um so it's just been you know not every company is like that um although you know loophole is obviously a company trying to make money and, and stuff like that but i haven't seen them pull a vortex or a hornady so i don't know yeah well you know fingers crossed all right i'm gonna pull up as we move forward right uh, this will be a short episode and then we're going to end it and then we're going to start all over again and we're going to do another episode uh, to fulfill our multiple podcast episode genres is that right genre Genre. Or quota? I don't, quota? Yeah. I don't know if it's so much the quota. Genre, it's just talking quota? about different shit, right? Fair. All right. So uh, this next photo, you haven't seen it. I haven't sent it to you. And I cropped the guy's company name out of it so that we're not calling did you anybody crop, out. What? Did you crop the name? Did you crop the name out of the image name? Yes. yes. Okay, good. I cropped everything out of it. So that you can only see what the class is and who's sponsoring, okay. right? You can't even see Perfect. this guy's face. He's not wearing any company logos. So you know what? If he sees this, then I hope he does something to improve the next time, right? But when you see this advertisement, I want you to tell me as an experienced shooter, right? Maybe even a guy who's gone through like a basic course, would you, just based off what you see, be like oh man i need to go to this class or would you see this and be like i can already tell that it's it's it, the the visual aesthetics is not telling me that i should go here mm -hmm. so here it is all right intro introduction to precision rifle and you could see it's sponsored by a few companies right but you look at the photo look at the photo does anything stand out to you? Anything? I mean, there's a, there's a lot going on here for starters. Okay. So, like, you being who you are, and, and it's hard it's hard to not be biased because not only have you trained with me, but you have your own experience, and then you've, I, I know. you've trained it, with other people. And so you know things that are right and things that are wrong. And then trying to put yourself in the shoes of somebody who doesn't is like yeah so challenging it, it is like you don't know what you don't so, know so you see a picture like that you're like damn i gotta fucking go to this class like yeah because it still looks it looks box. really high speed and cool yeah it looks, it looks really high speed it looks really cool unfortunately if if you've been to one basic course you're like oof probably shouldn't go to that class yeah. Again, not trying to call anybody out. I'm just saying like two sides of this, two sides of this coin here. You're a shooter, right? Start educating yourself on what what is right and what is wrong. So when companies put photos out like this, that should instantly tell you that it might not be the level that you're looking for, right? Uh, one, if, if it's an introduction to precision rifle, what are we doing messing around with tripods? Like, mm -hmm. I don't think any new shooter is ready for that. Not that it's an advanced skill, but that it's fundamentals that they haven't mastered from just the prone position, you know? Right. And then you look at his position. He's got the wrong leg up. And, you know, it's just the tripod that he's using is not conducive to being a shooting tripod. Not saying it doesn't work. Saying that, like, it's not a tripod that would be used for competitive reasons for hunting reasons definitely not hunting reasons right um no. military and, law enforcement and, he, I mean, and even and i wouldn't even rag on him about his equipment too much even though he's got a nice arcarel and he's using a, a clamp on thing but um 
you know, you just look at positionally his fundamentals of a tripod use, and it, that's not necessarily something. Again, if you've been to one basic class, you would be able to go, oh, that's probably not proper technique. Yeah. So that's the that's the new shooter. Like, you know, I think it goes back to like that episode we did about vetting your instructors. Mm -hmm. What is their background? You know, is it is this a pistol homie who's like, man, precision rifle blowing up? I'm gonna throw a class out there. We're we're all gonna get down on long guns. Or is this somebody who legitimately knows what the fuck they're doing? Um, but on top that's of that, one thing that drives me crazy because, you know, I know guys that are solid, like seasoned pistol shooters or carbine shooters, like seasoned guys that I would go to. Yeah. And I see him put on precision rifle classes and I'm like, fuck, like now I have to roast you. <laughs> Not cool. I know. I know, man. So on the company side of this, if you are a legitimate firearms training company, and you're going to put something out like this, you really need to take into consideration what it is that you're putting out there because it's out now. This advertisement mm -hmm. is out, and it will eventually come to light that at the time that you posted this, probably didn't know what the fuck you were doing, and <clears throat> you need to have more professionalism in what you're putting out, right? From the videos that you post to the photos that you put out there, you know, it's funny, Jeff. I don't know if you saw Falcor Defense's latest post. Um, you know, not trying Which to like post a lot. <laughs> not trying to call Vanessa out or anything like that. But they posted a picture of uh, of our team shooter Vanessa holding her rifle, and I remember mm -hmm. that was when you and I were out there. I think, or no, it was the day before. I was it was the, it was the day before. Yeah, I was teaching a class, and uh, Falcor was out there to take some photos and stuff like that, and. I'm sure what ended up happening was Jason was trying to take a photo mm -hmm. of Vanessa walking up the mountain and he said, Hey, can you close your bolt for me? Can you make it look more real? Cause this was just a photo shoot. It was, they weren't loaded magazines and nothing was being shot at the time. <clears throat> so she's probably like, Oh yeah, sure. Right. She closes her bolt. But then as I'm looking at the photo, I'm like, you have a magazine in and you have your bolt closed why isn't your fucking safety on? You know, like, what are we doing? You have to pay attention to these small little details. One, you want to be professional, but two, like, you know that it's a safety rule and, and people are going to fucking comment about it, right? I'm like, got to be better. Got to be more, like, I can't even, I Gotta personally cannot post that photo because it doesn't follow the guidelines of when I'm looking at photos and I say, is everything right in this picture, right? Because if you want to be a professional, that's the level that you have to go to is look at all the little details, right? So not not trying to call Vanessa out, but we already ragged on her a little bit in the in the team chat. And uh ultimately Russ came back with the uh the what do they call them? GIFs, like the moving pictures. Remember mm -hmm. that scene in Black Hawk Down where he's like, This is my safety. This is my safety. Yeah. So that was kind of like Vanessa's uh little cop out right there was uh that's my safety so anyway you know, what i will say though is is i i almost want to say that as much as we rag on the advertisements the info that's being put out i still think that there's always going to be people who they don't know what they don't know and they're going to go to these classes and they're going to come away with nothing more than what they were taught at this class and be happy at what they got because they don't know what they don't know. And they, they don't know what they didn't learn correctly. Of course. And that's, yeah. that's the set. That's, that's what bothers me more than anything else. I mean, and some people are happy with that, you know, like, yeah. And it shouldn't bother me. I shouldn't give a shit. Like it should not matter to me. So I, I get that. But I think on one end, does. I'm not, I'm not mad. Like I'm not upset about it. Um, you know, if they're going to continue their progression, then maybe we'll eventually see them and we'll fix them and help them down the right path. But if we don't ever see them, if they don't care, they just wanted to learn how to shoot precision rifle and learn the basics and hit a piece of steel. That's a man shaped size at 500 and mm -hmm. they're happy. Then I'm happy. Right. Um, I think that we're a little bit different flavor where we are detail oriented when it comes to basic or 
SPR2, which is tripod and barricades, like any of those things, like we're heavily detail oriented. We are built for the person who wants to learn the right way, wants to grow and develop. Mm -hmm. And we're not so much built for the person who just wants to get behind the rifle and start shooting long range because there's so much more that goes into it before we get to that phase. So for sure, you know, if that's what you're looking for, we're probably not the company for you. You should stop listening to this right now or immediately watching, whatever you're doing right now yeah so last video before we call it and this one i got nothing bad well that's not true i have one thing bad but it doesn't come during the course of fire it comes after so if you are doing that's what this, she said yes if you are doing this at the range then you need to stop this okay and we'll talk about it so here i'll play uh maybe Oh man, things are things are acting up. All of a sudden, things are just not happy. I don't know what's going on here. Is it thinking? Is that the problem? Is it like I need I to think? You downloaded it. Yeah, I did. I downloaded it. That's why I think maybe. Uh oh, doing all kinds of weird stuff, dude. Here we go. Oh, there we go. First lane, hold one hundred. So. Hundred. I don't know what that means. I really don't understand the lingo that they're discussing right now, right? Four fifty. But watch. Takes a shot. Okay, for that one, he kept his head down. Everything was good, right? Mm -hmm. But it was more of that first shot. I was kind of looking at like, did he pop his head up too soon? Like, did he take his shot? And then his head comes up, and he's waiting for his spotter to tell him. So that's kind of one of the things that we've been looking at with our military guys is to not be so reliant on the spotter shooter type stuff. Does that make sense? Yep, absolutely. So right now they're afforded the ability to have a spotter, and I feel like having a spotter is okay until you rely on it so much that it's, you know, it's a crutch and you can't stand up on your mm -hmm. own two feet without it. Um, you know, so if you want to have a spotter by all means, right. But I'm trying to push these guys right now to keep your head on the gun, stay on the rifle, look through the scope, manage your recoil, have a good buttstock yes. placement, have a good position, take your shot and start learning how to be self-sufficient. Right. I feel like, This is like a this is a hard way to say this, right? But I feel like the days of having a shooter and a spotter are limited to what type of engagement you might find yourself in. Whereas if you are moving through an urban environment or you are with an assault team or you're covering a team that might be moving somewhere or there's just not enough people for, you know, a shooter and a spotter at the same time, like are you setting yourself up to be fucked if you can't operate in a two man situation where one guy can dedicate all of his time to just spotting for you? Right. So you got to be so, more self sufficient. I, I would probably say that, in, at least in my experience, and, and yours might differ from what you've seen with people that have come through our classes, but um, I'd say 80%, if not more, of all law enforcement snipers don't have a spotter. We have a team, yeah. we have a, another partner with us but that guy's not a spotter that guy's yeah. working radio that guy's just literally has a duty belt on and is just kind of hanging out for whatever reason right looking at through binoculars for other stuff but he's not in the traditional sense a spotter so most law enforcement capacity like you don't get a spotter you're on your own yeah and i feel like you should train to that standard you know like mm -hmm. Put yourself in a position where you could be successful operating by yourself or you're the only guy who has a long gun or, or whatever the case is. And there's so much that goes into that other than just knowing what to do to take the shot, but like taking the mm -hmm. shot, recoil management, all of that stuff. So if you are one of those shooters who takes a shot and then lifts their head to see if you hit the target or not, just don't forget that you have a magnified optic right there and you should just keep looking through it and see if you hit the target through that, right? I guarantee you can see much better it's through easier. scope. But anyways, that is or it. Or if, if you don't like doing that, if you don't like doing that, you can take a shot, you can lift up, use binoculars, 
and then put your blockers down and put it back down. You'd have to be super fast for that, though, right? I mean, you'd be like, <laughs> bam, right? You better hope your yeah, I mean, name for your binos is on right. <laughs> Dude. All right. I'm going to take a video of that. This week, Monday, we're going out to the range. We got some cool stuff planned for the uh, Marines. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to have binos do strung it. around my neck. What's the distance, though? Because we got time of flight. We got all of these things to consider. Time of flight for the 308s we're using is about 0.42 seconds for 300 meters. Yeah, I was almost going to say about 850. If you have like an 800, 850, that'll give you just enough time to just maybe almost a second to get up. Our max distance for this range is 600 meters. All right, well, you're just going to have to be quick, fucker. All right, I'll try it. I'll try it. I'll be like, I'll be behind the gun. You know, I don't know. I have to think of what position I'll be in, but I'll do it. I'll take it and I'll pull it up really quick and see if I can make it happen. I'll do I'll do a video so there's, so there's proof that I did it. Do it. How would you know? This is going to be interesting. I don't interesting. know. All right, man. That's it for the videos and some of the photos that I wanted to show and just kind of get back into the groove with you since you've been gone all week. I can't remember because I don't remember yesterday. So I don't, I don't remember what the episodes I've done this week outside of what it's like to be a professional and versus an amateur. So if we did not do a week in review or a state of the industry podcast, this is it. So Jeff, I will see you in like 30 seconds as we regroup for the next episode. Everybody else, appreciate you listening. If you listen through the entire episode, that's awesome. You are more, you're better than I am because I couldn't listen to Jeff talk that long either. So, Jeff. I know, and I listen to all of them start to finish. <laughs> all right, man. I will catch you later. Everybody else, we'll see you out the range. Peace.